welcome to one of Europe's biggest and edgiest cities. This trip marks my fifth time in Berlin and I couldn't be more excited to be back. Amongst the insanely interesting history, Berlin is a cosmopolitan hub that's grown and moved on with the times, leaving it with a very open-minded spirit. Its history is a story of two parallel worlds. The end of World War II saw Germany divide. The East became communist whilst the West was capitalist. In Berlin, a 12-foot high concrete wall marked the division for more than 28 years until the borders finally came down in 1989 and the people were able to move freely once more. This tale of two cities has profoundly shaped the Berlin we know today. Come to the front, join the Defines cool Berlin. When the wall came down, rent was cheap and attracted artists who have transformed it into a hipster haven. The West has a more sophisticated feel, with remnants of medieval buildings and luxury shopping centres. Berlin draws some 13 million visitors a year, including us. Our journey started at London Gatwick with lunch in an airport lounge before taking a two hour flight to Tegel Airport in the West. From there we opted to take an easy 25 minute taxi ride to our accommodation in the centre of the city. We have two days planned to explore Berlin, venturing to food markets, historical landmarks and an eccentric museum like no other. This is our story in Berlin and we're starting it at the Reichstag building. The Reichstag building is in the heart of West Berlin, right by the River Spree, and it's totally free to enter. So I've just got down from the observation deck at the top of the Reichstag building right behind me here. So the Reichstag building is home to the German parliament, and it's a really cool building to come and look at, but really why you're going to come here is to go to the top of the observation deck and see across the whole of Berlin. So you can't just rock on up, you've got to book an appointment and I would advise to book it early. So we actually booked like a 9am appointment, uh, we pretty much went straight in but now it's about 10, 10.30 and the queues have got really busy, there's loads of school groups here. So my advice is to book an early appointment. Also, when you do go through, you've got to go through security, it's a little bit like going through airport security and you have to remember your passport, otherwise they won't let you in. So now I'm going to take a little stroll over to the Brandenburg Gates. One block south of the Reichstag building is the iconic Brandenburg Gate, an 18th century neoclassical monument that came to represent German division during the Cold War. US President Ronald Reagan's famous 1986 speech, Tear Down This Wall, was delivered here. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And since the fall of the Berlin Wall, the gate has become a symbol of peace and is now the backdrop to many tourist photos. It's very central and the surrounding areas include the huge tear garden and the humbling Holocaust memorial just around the corner. Now, I'm getting quite hungry, it's lunchtime. So we're going to head to an area called Hoitsberg to check out a food market and to do that we're going to try the public transport. Before we start, here's a quick primer on transport. Berlin is huge and finding the fastest way to get around is really important. Google Maps usually prompted us to use the metro, which is split into the U-Bahn and S-Bahn each of which has multiple numbered lines. The U-Bahn is mostly underground and generally operates in the centre, whereas the S-Bahn is a hybrid of a local train service and a metro, with lines running from the middle of the city out to the suburbs. Berlin also has a tram network, which mostly operates in the east half of the city. But for now, let's go back to our journey to Hoitsberg. 
So Google Maps has been my best friend whilst I've been in Berlin so far. Right now it's brought me to the Brandenburg Tor station uh, to get a couple of different trains to get to the food market we want to end up at. So I'm going to go down, find out what ticket I need to get and then make my way there. All of Berlin's public transport is run by the same company, BVG, meaning that your fare covers everything thanks to the universal ticketing system. Okay, so we've found the ticket machine and I'm going to work out what ticket to get. So, can it... Yep, so you can choose what language you want it in. So I'm going for English. Metro stations will have a ticket machine like the one that we found here. A single will cost €2.80, but we went for the 24-hour unlimited ticket for €7. Euros. If you're here for longer, then you can get a 7-day ticket for €30. Euros. Tickets must be validated as there are no gates. Instead, there are plain clothed ticket inspectors riding the trains that issue fines to anyone who has an unvalidated ticket. Now, if you have a 24 hour ticket, like we had, you only need to validate it the first time you use it. After which, there is no need to punch it in at the machines at every station. Just keep it on you to show the inspectors. So after taking the S-Bahn to Friedrichstrasse, we switched to the U-Bahn for Galitzer Bahnhof before taking a short walk through Hoisberg to Mark Telenoin. Total journey time of about 40 minutes. So we've just got the train at Galitzer Bahnhof using Google Maps again to find Mark Telenoin to get all that food. Let's go. In 2011, Mark Telenoin reopened its doors to the public 120 years after its original opening in 1891. It's the ninth of the original 14 market halls and these days it's a trendy spot serving all kinds of food from vegan to Turkish, German classics, craft beer and more. So there's loads of different international cuisine here. See there's a sign of there that says tapas but then also there's a sign here um, which is sort of translates to like a seasonal and regional food and I think they want to try and marry the two here. That's the impression I get. They want to celebrate the fact that Berlin's an international city with lots of international cuisine but they also want to celebrate regional food as well you know good honest local produce oh and before I forget so we've loaded up a currency card with euros um, which we've been able to use everywhere in Berlin so far but I understand that here in Market Neun you can't use card, you can only use cash. So make sure you bring a little bit of cash with you if you come. Hoisberg has a large Turkish community. So I decided to use my cash to try some of the Turkish food on offer. While well, the crew tucked into a huge plate of pulled pork and beef. One thing we learnt here is that the best day to visit Mark Telenoin is on Street Food Thursdays. A weekly event that runs until 10pm. However, we were told that it gets super busy, so get down here for 6pm before the good stuff is all gone. So with our stomachs full, we headed to the final stop of our first day, the centre of East Berlin, Alexanderplatz. So I'm now in Alexanderplatz, which is the centre of East Berlin. So this place is full with loads of shops, it's a real hub for transport. Admittedly, it's not the prettiest place in the world, but that doesn't matter because we're actually here to go up the tallest building in all of Germany, the TV Tower. Built in the late 60s as a symbol of communist power, the 368 metre high TV tower of Fernsetem dominates Berlin's skyline. Now of course the reason we're here is that there's a viewing deck and bar right at the top that gives the best views in Berlin. So I'm now at the top of the TV tower and I must say the views really are pretty amazing. 
It is quite busy here though, so my advice would be to do what we did and pre-book your fast view ticket. So you can do this online and it just means that you avoid any of the queues at the entrance and get up here a little bit quicker. Now if you want to indulge in those views, you can book a table at the restaurant. Uh, we did try to do this a few weeks ago, we wanted to get a window seat and there was nothing available. So like I say, if you want to do that, really do do that in advance. Um, but saying that, we've managed to get a beer at the bar, which seems like a pretty good way to end our first day in Berlin. So I'm going to enjoy this, enjoy the views and I'll see you tomorrow. So with our first day over, we can look forward to our second day where we'll be checking out some of Berlin's history, taking a food tour through the east side and paying homage to one of Germany's most popular adopted sons. But before we do that, here's a look at how holiday extras can help you on your trip to Berlin. Have all of your trips in one place with the new Holiday Extras app. View and update your details, have paperless bookings that also work offline and book all of your holiday extras from parking to hotels and car hire through to insurance. Back to Berlin. We begin our second and final day by heading over to Museum Island to check out the Bode Museum. So here's the thing, Berlin loves a museum and in fact they boast to have more museums than rainy days allegedly. So we've decided to come to Museum Island which is in the centre of an area called Mitt just off the Spree River and we're going to come and see the Bode Museum which is home to some historical art and sculptures and of course, in the true style of this trip, we pre-booked a ticket, of course, so we can avoid any queues and go straight in. So that's what I'm about to do. Originally named the Kaiser Friedrich Museum, the Bode Museum was renamed in honour of its original curator, Wilhelm Bode, in 1956. The building suffered heavy damage during the Second World War and was repaired over the second half of the 20th century. After a period of extensive renovation, the Bode Museum reopened to the public in 2006 and it now houses one of the greatest collections of historical European sculptures in the world. The Bode Museum was seriously beautiful both inside and out and it's huge. So if you want to really appreciate it, I recommend giving yourself at least two hours there. And here's the thing, most museums don't open till 10am and tend to be closed on Mondays, so keep that in mind when you're scheduling your trip. Right, we've got loads more to fit in, let's crack on. Next we're heading south to one of Berlin's most significant historical sites, Checkpoint Charlie. Checkpoint Charlie was the third border crossing opened by the Allies between the Old East and West Berlin. It grew into a symbol of Germany's divide during the Cold War, with American and Soviet tanks even having a standoff here during the Berlin Crisis of 1961. These days, Checkpoint Charlie is a big draw for tourists, with many posing for selfies with actors posted at the site. There's a museum and an open-air gallery where you can learn about the history of the Berlin Wall and the checkpoint. So right behind me here you've got Checkpoint Charlie which is a huge part of Berlin's history and it has become fairly touristy if I'm honest. Uh, as you can see there's loads of people here. So I'm actually ready to move on now. We're heading to the East Side Gallery which is the last standing part of the Berlin Wall and to do that we're going to jump in a taxi. Our taxi for the four kilometre journey to the East Side Gallery took 12 minutes and cost 11 euros and 70 cents. On the way, our taxi driver described his time growing up in the divided Berlin and how graffiti was common in the west side of the wall, but to do the same in the east was to risk being shot. And so, when the wall came down, artists flocked to the wall's east side to create works about freedom and reunification. One of the most famous paintings is My God, Help Me to Survive This Deadly Love, depicting the 1979 socialist fraternal kiss between the leaders of the Soviet Union and East Germany. The East Side Gallery is one of the last remaining parts of the Berlin Wall that's still standing. 
And do you know what? Coming here, for me, is really interesting. It just puts into context how Berlin has changed in what's nearly been 30 years since the wall came down. Next is the penultimate stop of our stay here in Berlin. We're meeting up with Jonathan Lusgarten from Original Berlin Walks to learn more about the city's food and history. Originally hailing from Venezuela, Jonathan has lived in Berlin for eight years and is a tour guide, food lover and musician. The tour starts outside the Weiner Stefana restaurant next to the Hackischer Mark station, which was also the first stop on our tour. After trying Maltaschen, a traditional dish of pasta and vegetables, we hit the streets for some sightseeing through some of East Berlin's courtyards before arriving at our second stop, Eat Berlin. Stocking their own sauces, which they've been making since 2011, and lots of regional produce, it's a great shop with some really interesting products. In particular, their five times distilled elderflower nice, right? gin. That hits the spot. Right yeah. The party. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's However, for me, the highlight of the tour was finally getting to try some curry vest. I'd heard a lot about it and was curious to see if it lived up to expectations. Yes. So you're going to have the um, curry first, yes. the classic sort of sausage turned uh, Berliner sausage with curry powder and spices and tomato ketchup and a lot of things going on. Okay. This is a classic way of eating it. You take, um, get a little paper tray yeah. and you get your little fork and you just have fun and eat it however okay, you Okay, so it's very quick, it's very much fast food. It's very quick and it's, it's, like, a, it's like a satisfying meal. It's, it's just happy, it makes you happy, it makes you... Yeah. Want to go on? Let's okay, well, go for then it. Then I've got to try I'm it. I'm curious to see what you think mm. of it. I'm going to go for it as well. Okay. I can only taste sauce. <laughs> That's kind of the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, first you taste the sauce, and then the taste of the sauce comes in later. And the result? It's good. Happiness. Happiness. Yeah. yeah it's right. good. That's it's great. good. You can buy tickets for the tour through the Holiday Extras online ticket store, which we'll link to below. Jonathan is a fantastic tour guide and really helped me to understand the historical context behind a lot of the food in Berlin. But what really stuck out with me was how he said Berlin's nightlife should be enjoyed. You know, talking about food and bars, I think that's the other recommendation I would have for Berlin, it's very simple, just be curious, you know, mm -hmm. just when you get here, don't don't get stuck in one neighborhood, you can have a great time there. And after the tour, Jonathan was kind enough to stick around and help me brush up on my German skills. There's another word. There's another... So let's start with the basic. Hello. So hello is very simple. You yep. take the E and you change it for an A. You say hello. 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 Okay, and mm -hmm. then goodbye. Very formal would be Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Mm. Or uh, my personal favorite is Tschüss. Um, here, here's one that's quite useful. Yeah. How do you say, um, can I have the bill if you're at a restaurant? Um, the easiest way is to say, uh, you actually say, we want to pay. Oh, okay. So you can say, wir wollen zahlen. And never ever forget to say, bitte. Bitte. Like these are really important words in German. Bitte, please. Okay, bitte, uh, whenever you order something, a beer, a glass of wine, the Rechnung, whatever, always say bitte, bitte. and then danke. Danke, thank, thank you. you. you like thank you. Yeah. And like danke schön. Is danke that... schön would be a more formal way of saying thank you. Okay. Or if you want to be really cheerful about it, uh, you say vielen Dank. Vielen Dank. Which is like many thanks, you know. Okay. A yeah. huge thank you to Jonathan and Original Berlin Walks for teaching us so much about the city. So, to finish off our time in Berlin, we're heading to the basement of the Circus Hostel. The David Hasselhoff Museum. Come right in. This is it. All of it. Um, so here's the thing. David Hasselhoff is a bit of a big thing in Germany. So they've got a bit of a shrine to him right here in the circus hostel. You've got some lovely Baywatch memorabilia. 
right here. Um, some photos of David at the wall singing Looking for Freedom. A beautiful photo of David staring right into your eyes. And then some Hoff facts, here's one for you. Um, in Germany, David shares his dubbing voice with Kermit the Frog. Bet you didn't know that. So that's pretty much it for the David Hasselhoff Museum. It won't take you long if you do decide to come. And what's great about it is that the hostel itself has its own brewery. So you can finish up with a pint there, which is exactly what I'm about to do now. But before we finish, I just want to remind you to hit the subscribe button. We have loads of travel guides on the channel and lots more exciting destinations to come. So our time in Berlin has come to an end and this has in fact been my fifth time in Berlin and I'm still discovering new things to do. I really liked what Jonathan, our tour guide, said to us. He said, be curious in Berlin and that totally sums it up. Yes, there are the obvious things to do and they're really interesting, but also expect the unexpected. So what a better way to end a trip then with a big old stein of beer. Prost. Come to the front, join our cause. Free will is all we look for. You scream and you shout.